Yeah, Michael Beal. I mean, we see managers these days lasting a matter of weeks. This is another one, and the message uh, I'm getting is that the progress that the club wanted to see on the pitch hasn't quite been there, and as a result of that, Michael Beale has lost his job, as you say, just nine weeks and 12 games after taking over. Of course, he won four of those 12 matches. I was here just, what, nine, ten days ago when they won 3-1 against Plymouth, played very well in the second half that day, and Beale looked very relaxed and happy afterwards, but two defeats on the road to Huddersfield and then Birmingham at the weekend has sealed his fate, and Sunderland are looking for another head coach here at the football club. Look, you all know, Keith, better than most, safe to say, he hasn't really ever won the fans around. So how heavily has this decision been influenced by those fans, do you feel? Yeah, look, I think it's part of it. I think, you know, you would be wrong to suggest that it wasn't. Look, I don't think he's probably done himself too many favours by results on the part. Perhaps one or two of the things he is innocently said and it hasn't helped the supporters. But look, I, I was here at the stadium um, the day he was announced. There was a, a massive queue of supporters round at the ticket office queuing for tickets for the, the Sunderland-Newcastle match, the first derby between the sides in, in eight years in, in the FA Cup. And when I was asking those supporters what they thought about the, the new manager, many of them were saying Michael Hood. They didn't actually know who he was. And, you know, that, that was poor from them, I think, given the fact he'd been manager uh, at Rangers, at QPR. He'd been offered the Wolves job and, and turned it down. But I think very much he was on a bit of a hiding to nothing from the supporters. They'd made their mind up about him early, early on. I think the only thing that would have saved him and given him longevity in the job would have been if he'd got off to a, a really good start and he'd put a lot of wins together and he had Sunderland up in those playoff positions. I felt after the Plymouth game nine days ago that he was beginning to get that. He was beginning to win the fans over, but it's amazing in football just how quickly things change. Those two defeats in the space of a few days at Huddersfield and Birmingham, and it's led to the, the calls from the supporters again for him to, to go, and the club have, uh, have listened to that. Look, I, I think in many ways you can applaud the club because they could have kept this going until the end of the season. It wasn't a nice feeling between the, the supporters and the club due to the fact that they weren't happy about his appointment, but they have decided to cut their losses uh, and go with Mike Dodds, the interim manager, until the, the end of the season. So, look, they got it wrong. Clearly they got it wrong because he's only been in charge for nine weeks, but they have essentially, with this dismissal today, and of course, remember, we're waiting for official confirmation from the club, but it's our understanding that he has gone. But with this decision today, they have, in essence, admitted that they have made a, a mistake and they've done that quite early. So, so, look, I think they need to be recognised for that as well. Absolutely. And I hear you saying that, you know, you've got to applaud the club for making the decision now. But have they got themselves into this pickle themselves because, you know, 12 months ago, it seemed like they were finally in a stable position. They had Tony Mowbray at the helm and then they sack him. Mm. So it's kind of, it feels like it's a little bit self-inflicted. Yeah, well, look, the fans love Tony Mowbray, didn't they? And I, th I think that that's what made this really difficult for them to accept when Michael Beale came in because they loved Tony Mowbray. They felt that the, the manager, Mowbray, spoke to them as supporters and they felt that it was a real connection there. They loved the football that, that they played and it was a, a really good fit for the job but things weren't going well behind the scenes between Mowbray and the hierarchy. Some of that to do with recruitment and his inability to have any control over transfers. At, at Sunderland, the, the head coach, Vicky, essentially coaches the players and and, and that's it, and tries to make them better. It, it's a day-to-day -day basis. He's not behind the scenes selecting players. That is done by the recruitment team. So they're essentially given players to, to work with. That wasn't working with Tony Mowbray. I, if I'm honest, felt that Michael Beale might be a good fit because he excels as, as a coach, and that is what he prides himself on, and I thought that might be the thing that works for him here. But as I said, I feel that the supporters had made their mind up early, and the only thing that was going to change that would be if he got off to a great start. He didn't. He lost his first match here at the Stadium of Light, 3-0 to Coventry City, and although he kind of recovered it a little bit, I always felt that he was... He was in a difficult situation where they were looking for a couple of defeats to then call for it for his head again. And look, I think he'll probably feel, although he'll be disappointed, I think he'll feel a bit relieved as well because I think he's the strain of this is probably 
been difficult for him in the last couple of weeks and he'll probably feel a little bit free now that he has been relieved of his duties. But obviously for him, two short spells in charge of Rangers and then here at Sunderland doesn't look too good on his CV and it'll be interesting to see where he goes next. Potentially he will return to, to coaching and not uh, remain as a, a number one like we've seen at both Rangers and, and Sunderland because it's not worked out for him. So it'll be interesting to see what Sunderland decide to, to do long term. But it's my inf information that Mike Dodds, the interim manager, will be in charge uh, until the end of the season. Yeah, and just on that, if, you know, I was looking back, and since the turn of the century, I'll read them, you know them, but it's Phil Parkinson, Andrew Taylor, Lee Johnson, Mike Dodds interim, Alex Neal, Tony Mowbray, Mike Dodds interim, and then Michael Beale, and now Mike Dodds, like you say, till the end of the season. Isn't this a club at the moment that are just crying out for just a little bit of stability? Are you surprised that they're going to wait until the summer to search for the permanent replacement? Uh, the reason, the reason I'm, I'm smiling there, Vicky, is because I've seen quite a few more uh, come through the door here in my, my ten years covering the club, and they've just really been, been unable to get someone in who has that longevity and has that security, and they know that they can rely on for a lot for a long time. Look, Sunderland are a massive football club. There's 40,000 supporters coming here every week to, to see them. They're the biggest supported club or one of the biggest supported clubs since the likes of Southampton and Leicester came down in the, in the championship and they've got everything here to make them a Premier League football club so if they don't get success straight away there will always be that pressure on a football manager at the club and that is why you're seeing managers coming in for such a short spell. They really like Tony Mowbray. I felt that Tony Mowbray probably could have taken them back up to the Premier League after a couple of years but as I say things didn't go well behind the scenes and Michael Beale was given that chance. It was a surprise appointment at the time I have to say. I think a lot of the supporters wanted to see a, a foreign coach brought in. They, they were disappointed with the news when we broke that back on December the 18th that Beale would, would take over and as I say he was on to a bit of a losing uh, start after that. It was really difficult for him to try and change things around. And look, this football club, I think, will get back up to the, the, the Premier League. They won't do with Michael Beale in, in charge. And it'll be interesting to see who the, the man will be who will do that. But, you know, I could go back 10 years. The list is endless. Once I'm off this live broadcast, I think I'm going to go back and count the amount of managers I've seen through the door here. There's been a, a lot over the last 10 years and they're crying out for stability. The fans will be hoping that the next manager gives them that stability and is the one who will eventually get them back up to the Premier League where they belong. Just uh, before you go, I think we're hearing now that actually um, they have just confirmed it from the club. But just, just before I tell you that and, and read the quote from the club, I just wanted to put you in the situation, which I know is a little bit tough for you, though, because you're out there trying to do a job. But you're, you've got your ear to the ground, Keith. Who do you <laughs> think they want to see in charge at the club? The supporters, do you mean, yeah? Yeah, the, the supporters. supporters. Vicky, yeah. If, if you mean, yeah, yeah, I th yeah. I think the supporters would love someone like uh, Roy Keane. I think they would love a, a big name. For years now, they've been crying out for someone like Kevin Phillips to come in because they've got that pool with the football club. There's that association. They've been top players here. I think they would love a big name like that. But look, under the current regime at the club and the way they're they're doing things, that is not the way they want to go about it. They want to bring in a a young up-and-coming manager. It was interesting when Tony Mowbray was in charge because obviously he was the oldest manager in the championship, but he's got the youngest squad. This squad here is the youngest squad in the English Football League out of all 92 clubs. So I think, I think as much as they want a big name, they want someone who can come in and work with these young players. And look, although they weren't happy with Michael Beale to start with, I genuinely think that if he'd got off to a good start, they would have changed their mind. But it was just, it was a, such a difficult time for him to come in after Tony Mowbray had, had done so well. There's a couple of names who were mentioned uh, when Michael Beale came in in December. One of them is uh, Will Still, who's a young manager uh, over in, in Europe. And I think I've seen his name mentioned a number of times in some supporters' sites, and I've heard his name mentioned. When I, speak to, when I speak to fans, so I think someone like him would, would go down well at the club. I think without doubt the club will be listening to the supporters now because I don't think they did that with an appointment of Michael Beale and they decided to go ahead with it anyway. It hasn't worked for them 
and look, they're back to the, the drawing board again. But I, I look, I think Mike Dodds will be in charge until the end of the season. You've got to remember, he was given two games, or sorry, three games, should I say, an interim charge between Mowbray and Beale. He won two of those, one of them at home to Leeds United, where they were excellent that night. Uh, and I think he will be given it until the end of the season and Sunderland will take stock then. Whether they're in the Championship or they manage to get themselves up to the playoff places and sneak into the Premier League, we must wait and see. But I think... Mike Dodds, because he did so well in that interim uh, period, will be afforded that chance.